Annexation in Nigeria has a long history dating back to the pre-colonial era where traditional and customary taxes were levied by indigenous authorities. The colonial government introduced formal tax systems primarily to raise revenue for administration and governance. However, the modern tax system in Nigeria has evolved over the time to its current state. In recent times, Nigeria has experienced significant shifts in its tax policies, reflecting a commitment to foster economic growth, improved compliance, and adapt to the challenges posed by the evolving digital landscape. One pivotal milestone in this journey is the enactment of the Finance Act, which has a far-reaching implication for businesses and individuals across the country. The Finance Act, a comprehensive piece of legislation, stands out as a cornerstone in Nigeria's recent tax reforms. Enacted to stimulate economic growth, this act introduces changes across various tax categories, reshaping the fiscal landscape of the nation, from corporate taxes to personal income tax. The act aims to create a more conducive environment for businesses and individuals. Hello and thanks for joining us again. I am Chana Ejoga. Thanks for staying with us. Now back to our topic. In Nigeria, tax policies are subject to change influenced by economic conditions and government priorities. Key areas of focus often includes corporate taxation, value-added tax, VAT, and individual income tax. Some potential recent developments might include adjustment to tax rate, changes in tax incentives for specific industries, and efforts to improve tax administration and compliance. Additionally, reforms to address issues like tax evasion and increasing the tax base are common. Despite these reforms, certain challenges and bottlenecks pose a threat to the growth of taxation in Nigeria. The significant size of the informal economy makes it difficult for tax authorities to effectively capture and tax all economic activities. Tax evasion and avoidance practices are prevalent as some individuals and businesses engage in practices to evade taxes, such as under-reporting income, engaging in transfer pricing, or using offshore tax havens to shield income from taxation. How well has taxation thrived in Nigeria? What are the challenges that have hampered its growth? What do we need to do differently? And what is the way forward? Next on the program, we bring you an exclusive interview I had in Lagos with a seasoned tax professional, a chartered accountant, a certified stockbroker, lawyer, and the president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation in Nigeria, Barrister Samuel Agbelui MNI. Well, yes, I will agree. I will agree in the, in, 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 because it's been a topic with you, uh, over the years. And uh, of course, tax payment is a deduction from company's uh, uh, profit or reduction of uh, cash flow. So to that extent, anything you take out and you uh, utilize in terms of uh, payment of tax, is uh, reducing your ability to function well as a company. Uh, but that is not the end to that uh, narration. The moment you do that and you put it in the hand of government, call revenue agency who collect on behalf of the government for the utilization of everybody. And the other end of the utilization of the money by government, once that is not done, then the benefit for which we have made that payment is lost. So you don't have good roads, you don't have electricity, you don't have security, and as a result, you need to provide that for yourself. Kind of double tragedy. In the first instance, you have made this payment so that government can make life easy for you. But 
on the other hand, that is not being done. So what you have paid for, you are also made to do it uh, uh, yourself. So if you look at it from that uh, perspective, we can say uh, the tax system, in a way, are starving business growth. But I think that is changing, and we can only hope that it will get better. Corruption, lack of accountability. You, you, in any system, in any country, the leaders are elected to manage our common resources properly on our behalf. So you are supposed to give us electricity, spend money on infrastructure and the likes. And the moment you budget 100,000, for example, to do a route from point A to point B, and instead of spending the other naira, you spend 20 naira, you have somehow kept the 80 naira remaining outside of what is supposed to do, then you won't get the desired result. So, and this is actually the main problem why our tax to GDP has remained low, because the taxpayer don't actually trust the government. And once there is no trust, that becomes a problem. Because anywhere in the world, nobody pays tax with a smile on his face. Because you want to have your money and spend the way you want. But in order to have a civilized environment, so in a way we define tax as the payment we make to live in a civilized environment. So in order to live in a civilized environment, the law is there that compels you to make certain amount of money pay it to the government, so that government in its own wisdom can sit down and look at this pool of money that has been paid to it and spent on behalf of everybody. So there's always a disconnect. The moment that is not done, there's an expectation, there's a payment, but that is not done. And as a result, people over the year <coughs> lack, start having doubt in the ability of the government to do what is right. And once that confidence is not there, they are not going to voluntarily give you their money. And once there is no voluntary compliance, then there's a problem. The government will be left with nothing other than enforcement. Mm. And I tell you, enforcement has its cost. That is not the way to go. It should be a, a, a kind of last resort uh, uh, strategy for government. But because of that lack of confidence in the system, People are finding ways around the uh, payment of tax, and that is the problem we have on our hand. Well, I am, I am for several reasons. I am because the president of Nigeria, President uh, Bola Tinubu, has because tax is finance, and. Whether it is money, trade policy, fiscal policy, something is key. You're, you need to build confidence of the nationals and even the international communities. And so far, the current president has been saying the right words, the right statement. He's been making the right words and the right statement. So to that extent, it's already building confidence. That is key. The moment you drop the ball in terms of confidence building, there's a trouble. Now, he has also made the right course. I think within a few hours of his uh, inauguration, he identified multiplication of taxes yes. as a problem. And that is the first step to take in problem resolution. Once you identify the problem, then you can move to other steps. Now, he has identified that. And he has not just done that. He has set up a committee, the presidential committee you mentioned, and he has picked a person that most of the stakeholders believe in. Because Taiwan has built his name over the years. So there is no doubt of his competence, of his integrity. These two variables are very important. Now, I'm also privileged and happy that, to say that I'm a member of that presidential committee. So I have an idea of what is going on. I'm not speaking for them. I'm speaking as president of CIT. There are no a lot of works because I also have knowledge of majority of the members of that committee who are ready to work free of charge, pro bono for Nigeria. Taiwan is not collecting salary and is giving his all 
to Nigeria. Those are the set of people who can turn around the, the fortune of Nigeria. So to the extent that I believe that if the president take the report of that committee and implement properly, it will be a game changer for Nigeria. And I have no doubt, because of the antecedent of the president, what he has done in Lagos, I've practiced my task essentially in Lagos. So I have a kind of personal understanding of President Inubu. I pray he'll be able to replicate what he did in Lagos. He will still have the political way to do that. Once the report, because the timeline for this report, for this committee, is to do three months report submission, six months, and one year. The three months has been done. The six months is about to be done. Why we do the six months in a few months' time? Once everything is concluded, I pray and believe that President Tinubu will be able to demonstrate once again the political way to implement whatever is submitted. Once that is done, I see that as game changer. Because the major problem we have is revenue, and we need money to drive government project. Once that is done, Nigeria will be moving in the upward trajectory. Multiplication or multiplicity of that is even bad on its own. And it has not worked anywhere. If you look at the developed country, where tax revenue has been the main source of their development. Go and look at the number of taxes they collect. You don't have CC2 that we have in Nigeria. There are some states in this country, I won't mention name, where they collect as many type of taxes as CC2, some 70 something. A state, now, not even. Yes. You know, you, you see the federalism, if you dig deep down, into the various type of taxes collected. FRS is collecting in unit. And the FRS I know will not go out of what the law says to collect what is not in the, in, in the law. Some of the states, I won't mention them, will also not go out of what the law says. The state essentially don't collect tax from business or company. They are essentially to collect personal income tax. Mm. And companies don't pay personal income tax. It is individual, yes. adult working, who are supposed to pay personal income tax. But once you fail to, to deduct and remit, or you deduct, you fail to remit, and there is audit mm. on the company, the duty falls on the company to make right what it has not done. And that is not the fault of any government. So essentially, the states are not bothered by federal inland revenue service. The federal state internal revenue service collect, so it's like the complaints, whether big, medium, small, are just agents of collection to the government, the dot and remit. Your failure to do, to carry out this obligation is what makes you to pay. Possibly they do back duty five years, six years ago, and they realize you have not deducted. Some of these staff have gone. So you have obligation to pay. Otherwise, it is those individuals who work with you or for you that are supposed to, that, that, that are supposed to pay. So you don't have that uh, uh, responsibility. So that is pretty clear. Where do we have the problem? We have the problem because you can't, the government does not need 62 type of taxes to get money. And statistics have shown that possibly about four or five type of taxes give more than 90% of the tax revenue to government. So why do we waste your time with other 50, 60 type of taxes? So you know what? Those who are actually thriving in this area, to an extent, the local government, to an extent, the non-state actors. And we also need to look at this side of some of the state governors when we talk of non-state actors. During the Electronically, the campaign and the whatever, some stakeholders sponsor some political people into office. So when they get to office, a way of compensating them is to say, okay, go and collect money in this aspect of the state. And these people are not professionals. Wow. So when you see some individual blocking roads, mm. 
it is wrong and illegal to block road to collect taxes. So when you, you won't see a staff of FRS to do that, doing that. You won't see, I'm so certain, you won't see state internal revenue service, professionals from their offices collecting this. So who are the people doing this? Non-state actors. And that is the big problem, problem we have in this country. And I tell you, the president needs to weigh in. It's going to be part, I pray, that it is part of the uh, report that the presidential committee will be sub, uh, submitting. But as an institute, we'll be talking about this for several years. And until we get that done, we won't go anywhere. There could be gap, maybe some element of corruption. But by virtue of what I know, it is not, it is not as pronounced as the impact of a non-state actors in terms of uh, revenue to the government. Okay, let me, let me, we actually call it tax system. And tax system to us is policy, law, administration. Now, the policy can be good. The law is a function of the policy. So the policy can be good, the law can be good, but the administration. And if you pick the legally recognized uh, administrators, there will be minimal problem. But like I said before, those who are not recognized by the law, those are just uh, godfather, um, those are the parasites who are giving taxation bad name. If you take them off, then we'll be good. So I have a lot of reservation about the non-state actors. So, but if you must move forward, if you want to, because we know that Nigerians are not difficult people. Nigerians are good people. They just want to have a good life and do their stuff and move on. So the moment you spend their money judiciously, accountability, you are good. They are going to comply. They can see what you are spending their money on. The moment you remove the non state actors, and you need a lot of power because these people are very strong. They are holding the country to, 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 to ransom. You need a lot of political will, we, the, 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 the security uh, apparatus to move against them. Once this is done, and the state also needs to do more in terms of infrastructure. The various 36 states plus FCT are not at the same level in terms of infrastructure to collect uh, uh, tax revenue. So once we are able to focus on this and resolve the problem around these uh, TV items, then we should be good and we should be good to go. Okay. We can make it simple. And we know we, it's what we do from time to time. And it's what the Institute has been recommending over the years. The moment uh, the, the presidential committee is trying to simplify, possibly I hope we get that uh, uh, report out, make the task, uh, different type of tasks, whatever you want, name we want to call it, under unit, possibly nine. So you could divide it, you can file at the comfort of your office, which FRS is already doing, and some states are doing already. You can file your return at the comfort of your office, and you can relate with what the government is using the money for. Then, of course, you know it was just in 2023 that our, our tax to GDP moved from 6%. It has always been in 6% for God knows when, to 10.86 last year to GDP. President Bola Tinubu has said he wants to have 18% to GDP. That's a mass movement. Once we are able to do that, which is about 5 point something, percent gap. No, seven point something percent gap. Once we are able to do that, a lot of revenue will be in the hand of government. And once people can see you put on your light, it works, you work on a 
proper littered road, the system is working. I tell you people, we, so if you want to make it efficient, you need to show, you, might, you need to demonstrate this. You need, and there's no other way to say this, other than the structures are there. The structures are there at federal and some state, like I said before. But no, no, no matter how beautiful the structures could be, if people cannot relate with what they are giving to you and what you are using the money for, they will subtract the system. Let me start by saying CITN is a professional institute. We call ourselves a knowledge-based institute. So what do we do? We train personnel, we train professionals. We set the standard of knowledge required to be a task professional in the country. And we have done a lot of advocacy over the year. We have conducted research to let government know that if you move towards the direction, you get better out output. I started my uh, engagement, my contribution as a task professional mm -hmm. with Ikeja district, as an officer of a district. Mm -hmm. I grew through the rank and I know even years ago as a uh, chairman of Ikeja district, mm -hmm. we've always been speaking to the fact that it was not wise that Nigeria was running a mono economy mm -hmm. depending on petroleum. It is not going to work. And petroleum or natural resource, as we know, is a wasting asset. So look at Sweden, look at Canada, look at developed countries. I'm going to look at what they get from uh, uh, tax revenue for development. So we've been at the forefront of advocating, of training of uh, uh, our members and other stakeholders as to what to do. If you're a taxpayer, we train you as to your responsibility, your obligation to pay what you need to pay. If you are a company, you are an artificial human being. You have, the moment you collect your certificate of incorporation or registration from Corporate Affairs Commission, an obligation is triggered for you to collect tax on behalf of government, and that you must do. If you are a government, how to do your tax administration properly, we've been at the forefront of doing this over the years. And we have done a lot of recommendations. When President Buhari came in, we met with him and said, Over, during the military reg regime, you have budget. Every year budget comes and everything will start 1st of January. And we're having budget starting April, May. So we're not keeping to the 1st of January date. Also, during the military, they come with a circular. Once the budget is out, they come with a circular whereby they explain the tax expectation of whatever the revenue projection they are having in the budget. The civilian came and they abandoned that. So we met with President Buhari, just like we have been meeting with a uh, previous uh, government and recommended to them that this is key. You cannot be wishing to collect revenue. You must take the proper action. And that we recommended and President Buhari in fairness to him, took that. And I think in 2019, the first uh, Finance Act came. Finance Act was now uh, giving us details as to how to go about tax revenue on a yearly basis. And the government smartly used Finance Act to correct some or update some uh, obsolete tax law so that, because tax is dynamic, it's about it's, it's our activities. So you can't necessarily use your knowledge of 10, five years ago to decide on what to do now. I'll give you an example, the economic space, the internet and the likes. So uh, it was not at this magnitude some five years ago. So it's a dynamic thing that you need to keep on updating and upgrading from time to time. So President Buhari listened to us and he did that. And this current president, because of his also because of his uh, financial background and what he did in Lagos, is listening. So we are always ready to collaborate with the government. That we have been doing. We have various program. You must be trained as a member of this institute. That you are a fellow does not guarantee that you are up to date. 
So there are mandatory professional training program. We have seminars. We have a major conference that you must attend. This is to make sure that you are not just a fellow, but in the real sense of it, you are competently a fellow of the institute. Federal Inner Revenue introduced uh, tax promas, it's a package, uh, revenue collection package some years ago. They had their uh, teaching problem. We addressed them uh, at the background because we are a conservative institute. Don't see us going uh, on the news of, uh, on the pages of newspaper criticizing government. It is not for lack of uh, strength to do that, but that is not the way to go. We, once Nigeria is good, it's good for every one of us. So we advise uh, them. Uh, uh, we have our channels of communication. When, when task promise was introduced, it came with a lot of uh, problems, teaching problems, I will, I will call it. And we are advising them. And Federal Inner Revenue uh, was listening. Some of the returns were time bound. For example, your VAT for previous month must be paid latest 21st of this month. Your return must be made, annual return must be made within six months after the year, your year, uh, uh, your accounting year. So this, some of these things are time bound. But because of the challenges that came with tax promas, FRS relaxed that aspect with a circular. That okay, you can, we are giving extension Possibly, possibly some weeks, possibly some uh, 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 months, and that has helped the system. And that promise is almost a kind of perfect uh, uh, package for uh, for you to pay to make your returns and pay uh, to Federal Inner Revenue Service. I also know some states, but I don't want to start mentioning this because I don't want to single out one and uh, leave. Uh, I know some states are also doing very well in this regards. So once this is done, because the era is of uh, carrying paper everywhere, mm -hmm. it's fading away, it's going. So we need to do more in this regard. And I believe the federal government and uh, some state government are in the, moving in the right direction. Uh, those other states that are yet to jo uh, join the train should do that, so that there will be less of movement to Abuja to collect a monthly federal allocation. Yes, I believe we can get it right. I also believe we have no choice than to get it right. The population is growing at a rate that uh, is alarming. Hmm. But I don't want to go there because it's a sensitive yeah. uh, topic in the country. So why we may not be doing anything much in terms of our population growth, but population growth has its uh, consequence. Yes. So you need to provide from more mouth, more, uh, you need to build more school, more hospital, more infrastructure. So how do you finance all this ever increasing uh, monetary obligation that government needs to carry out? It starts. And you should have also, population itself shouldn't be a problem. Because once you have a working population, they'll be able to pay uh, enough tax that the government will use to finance whatever the activity is. So we have no choice in this. We just need to get it right. Because the moment the gap gets too wide, the unemployed, the system that is backward, we fight back. And we don't want that to happen in Nigeria. So we have no choice. And it is been proven. It's the way to go. You can get money from other sources. But tax revenue, Taxation is just too important to be ignored. And because of its importance, we, get, we, we must get it right. And I believe we will get it right. And I, in a way, have a lot of hope in this present government. I was in Lagos when Lagos was generating 600 million per month. I'm still in Lagos now that they are generating about 60 billion per month. That is a major gap. And Lagos can do more. And federal government Nigeria can do more. 
other states in the country can do more. Just do the right thing and everything will fall in place. Quality advice to the government, some of which you may not see on the uh, pages of newspaper. We must keep on advising the government. We must also keep on criticizing them uh, in a manner that we bring out, bring about solution. The criticism you may not see on the pages of newspaper, but we bring out the fact and we tell them you will implement this. Nigeria will be the best for it. And of course, you take all the accolades. If you are the president, Nigeria is good. Everybody says President Tinubu's uh, regime. Nobody is going to mention me, uh, me mention Agbelui. And no, no, but people may not even think of CITN, the role we, we play. I just told you of how we advise President Buhari and how he listened to us and how that thing materially affected the course of actions of that government. But of course, President Buhari, for listening, so that in our own expected, uh, 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 estimation, has done very well. So he has contributed positively to that development in the country. So we keep on doing this. We will keep on telling the, the, the government and we keep on educating the populace. You, you, some, people, some people say uh, we have not seen what the government has used the money for, what the government is using the money for. I say, so we are not going to pay. So it's a matter of chicken and egg. Which one comes first? If you have an action, or something to do with the government, and you say until the government blinks, I'm not going to blink, the country will suffer for it. So can you please blink first, give the money to the government, and the moment you pay your what you're supposed to pay, you have the moral obligation to take the government or criticize them. And even in CITN, we say there is a direct correlation between a task-paying society, a task-compliant society, and democracy. Once you pay, you are supposed to pay 100 naira, and you pay 100 naira, you are as bold as liar, and you are able to confront the government. You are not doing the right thing. But the moment you are paying 50 out of 100, you have some moral body. You want to talk, and you look at, <laughs> the moment these people come after me, they will see that I have not done the right thing. So you are not talking. So we encourage the people, can you give this government the opportunity to do the right thing, but first of all, make your payment. Once you make your payment, don't sit back at home. On election, they don't watch uh, television. Go and participate so that Nigeria can move forward. This is our charge. This is what we'll be doing, and we are ready to do more, ever more than we have been doing before. It's new, it's fresh, it's all about policies and strategies. Watch out for NIPS Policy TV programs on NTA News 24. Tune in on Mondays, Tuesdays, Fridays and Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 26, Star Times Channels 101 and 433 and Free TV Channel 703. Miss this and miss out on policies that will affect you in our country. Join us. Nigerian tax system, actually, I would say uh, it's not fair to our business. The reason is, uh, oftentimes, people come around, some they will say they are from the Plateau State Internal Revenue Service, some will say they are from the local government level, <coughs> others they will say that they are marketers, they come for uh, tax collection. So it's actually affecting our business negatively. A businessman, because uh at the end of the day, you find out that you pay multiple tax and you don't see the dividends of the tax that you're paying. And, uh, and uh, sometimes it doesn't all go well. Knowing fully well that we are businessmen, you know, so take for instance, you are at the place of my work now, this is my show. 
and I, I, I own the company. But at the end of the day, I have my tax clearance and other things. But at the end of the day, I don't see what government does to aid uh, the cost of production. Let's see our taxes in our road. Let's see it in the infrastructure that has to do with light. You understand? Knowing fully well that uh, they are not giving us a better playing ground to do business. The, the tax, well, depending on who is collecting, who is coming for the tax, some, some, some of them are considered, but some are a bit on the high side. Even the tax itself, we are supposed to be getting some social immunity from it, like the roads and other things, but honestly, nothing, as soon as somebody is affording the money of the taxes that you are paying, we are paying the taxes, but as if somebody is eating the money. Anybody that come and introduce himself, say he's from government, so we have to obey and give the money. But definitely we don't know what are they going with the money, what are they doing with the money. Paying tax, we pay the federal government, we pay the state government, we even pay the local government, and indirectly what we buy, you know this income tax, value added tax, we all pay. So how it affects my business, it, it, like now, things keep going, prices keep increasing. And when you tell customers about the price increment because of value added tax, you understand. When you tell them about it, they don't usually feel happy about it. And it affects me. It makes my business not to go more. That's less turn turn out of people. If people that are coming to patronize you they are like 30, 40, we're getting like 20, 50 because they will look for other alternatives. With, uh, the, uh, with the number of uh, tax uh, agencies that they often come around, they affect our business in this way. Uh, they make us to increase our selling prices whereby our customers find it difficult to buy. They oftentimes complain that uh, the selling price is high. And the reason why we make it like that is because of the tax system. Because we have to pay tax to different uh, agencies, just like I've said earlier on. So with that, we have to uh, increase our uh, selling price. Um, multiple taxation sometimes uh, will not allow your business to grow the way you want it. But if you're able to have uh, a system whereby, just like uh, today now, you will end up paying tax after doing your vehicle particulars, you end up paying tax. By the time you register your your PIN numbers, both in local government and federal inland revenues. Well, I think the government should be able to come up with a platform that uh, once you are in Nigeria, they should have a platform whereby you could be able to have all tax being paid in that uh, in that post, so that you know that whatever tax that you're paying is going to one post instead of spreading it around because we don't even know who is who like we don't know if some group of people could just come and say they are representing a false government or whatever we don't know how real they are aside that yeah but so the, some of them they come with their id card and i think um just to prevent that you just go to their office and just then you just go to their office and pay ahead of time so that when they come you're showing receipts of payments, yeah. Affecting our business psychologically because um, the this multiple tax that we are paying and other things, I don't, in short, even I don't even understand what is even happening in this country because the tax itself is uh, something that is affecting our business seriously now. Because if you pay the tax, you not even make the pre the sales from from the shop. When you pay tax, government is supposed to use it to develop a lot of things, but you see that it is us individual that are developing. We, 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 you see some of the, the environment, how the environment are, you understand. They don't use it. You go to, okay, let's say for example, not even in the shop, in our houses. You know, you're supposed to have all these basic amenities that you even pay. Water, light, all those things. It's, it's not, it's just like we are, we are just wasting money. You pay tax and they don't use it. It's very bad the function of all the purpose of tax i know the purpose very well but if you see that all these tax that have been collected like for instance i said different level like i said i don't know, i said the local government they come around some marketers too they will say that 
they collect this tax for uh, this uh, little little development. But as you can see, you know, it's not something that one will say that there's uh, that is going in the same direction. Seriously, we are not seeing the uh, the the function of the tax. We are not seeing it. Oh, <laughs> my brother, um, development in our nation, as the case may be. I, I wouldn't tell you, you also are in Nigeria, you should know that development in Nigeria, uh, things we are, I, I don't see us uh, doing well as a nation, because if you are talking about development, how much is the cost of transport today? How much do you spend for the same distance you go before now? How much do you buy for? Do you understand? Now there should be policies that will make all of these things work to aid uh, the suffering of Nigerians because the truth is the times that we're living now is so difficult most of us now park our cars and also use public transport because somehow it's cheaper by the time you buy fuel of uh, maybe a gallon of maybe three five or so and at the end of the day you end up uh, uh, going to just point A and the fuel has got finished so several things are actually not helping us to to see the dividends of those tax so the government needs to do more. If the roads are good, if the water is running, if the transportation system are good, if there is light, is there light? If there is light, I mean, then that means the tax we are paying is working. Uh, if you come in times of tax, we are paying tax and we are not seeing any, anything that, that are doing with the tax. My own understanding and my own observation, I would say tax is very good. Because without our tax, we cannot make development in our state, in our area, in our various local government. So the only disadvantage is that most people, they are, they are not able to pay their tax, maybe because they are having issues with their businesses, with their family and all that. So if the government can make it lesser, I believe that most people, they will pay their tax. But if it's higher, people will not be able to pay because of the current situation of the company, of the country, sorry, of the country, yes. For me, if I'm to suggest for the government, I would say for the tax to be fair to us, at least maybe one, uh, if the state government said they'll be collecting tax, fine. If one agency comes, there's no problem. But though we have multiple tax collections, we find it difficult. So I don't think it's, uh, it's right like that. Government should have a, a single system for the collection of this tax. I think it's going to help us. It has to pay their tax, do you understand? Because this is what will be used. Because a lot of times, this, this, I feel that they also face challenges of, you know, people not being able to, you know, pay their tax and all that. So, um, they should use the money. They should utilize it. They should use it for what is being meant. If there is anybody um, embezzling the funds or whatever, they should, you know, see to what they collect the money. If it's for the national development, they should see to it that what it is being collected is they use it for it. Like for instance, what is going on in the society? You know, the increment on the dollar, on dollar has made it very difficult for a business owner to purchase more of goods so that they can do their business well. So without that reduction of dollar, the way that dollar is going higher, if they cannot reduce it, I believe that it will be very difficult for people to pay their tax. Because the higher the dollar, they, it, will, it will be more difficult for people to pay their taxes. So if the government can do something about their dollar rates. I believe that things will go perfectly well and many people will pay their tax on time. Thank you for joining us on this segment. Today we have a very special guest. He is a prominent Nigerian that really <laughs> does not need any introduction. But I'll introduce him anyway. He's a Nigerian businessman. He is the co-founder and former group executive director, Sahara Group. 
an energy conglomerate with operations spanning the entire energy chain in Nigeria, Africa and beyond. He was a key member of Partnering Against Corruption Initiative, PASI, United Nations as pioneer member of the advisory board of the Private Sector Advisory Group Fund, the African Philanthropy Forum, amongst many others. Join me as I welcome Mr. Tony Patrick Cole, MNI. Thank you for joining us today on the program. Thank you very much. Now, you were here as a participant. What was your experience like? I think it was, first and foremost, one of the best experiences that I've had uh, educationally. I'd come into this environment first having gone into politics, but also interacting for the very first time in close quarters with people outside of the industry with which I had uh, set up a business and come to know. And that cross-section of meeting public servants, uh, the military officers, the police force, the immigration, the paramilitary, was just such a beautiful experience. And coming to see Nigeria from a much wider version, no regrets. And how long ago was that? This was like 43, so this was uh, three years, we're now in 45, so this will be three years ago. Now, how has the experience imparted on your person and your career? So, first and foremost, I think the network of uh, MNIs mm -hmm. that are out there mm -hmm. who give support, who give encouragement, who you can reach out to, uh, to help channel uh, new thoughts, especially when you're thinking of what next to do, how to move forward, that network is always there. Mm. And that network, you make the best out mm. of it. So I'm very grateful for the network of past alumni. I remember going to see um, President Babangida, uh, General Babangida, as soon as I graduated. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things he did once he saw the MNI badge, he's, he was the sec one. He said, this is one of the best things that you mm -hmm. have done. And it gave me the full understanding as to how deep this network is. Um, I saw also uh, General Obasanjo, who happened to be the founder mm -hmm. of uh, NIPS, the initiator, mm -hmm. and all of that. And again, he was very encouraging about the fact that I did that. What I did not know was back then, uh, when I came into NIPS, mm -hmm. was that my father was also part of the originating set that thought it through. So Basanjo had the idea and gave it to my father, who was a civil servant at cabinet office at the time. Mm -hmm. And they were the foundational members who thought through the whole idea of how NIPS should work. So mm -hmm. I think it was full circle for me coming back to see people and meet people who originated it and I now became a process mm. of it, even without knowing that they were the ones that started it. That for me was good. Oh, wonderful. Now, sir, what is your philosophy of life? Hmm. That's interesting. You must be able to make a difference. So for me, every human being is created and given a talent and a gift that is unique to them. And that gift, once it's translated, must make a difference to the people that you meet. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about myself and what gift I have been given, it is to help people discover themselves, who they really are, mm -hmm. and what purpose they're here mm -hmm. to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, within the context of the nation and all of that, I find myself always to be in the forefront of pioneering things. Things that people assume to be impossible, difficult, then I find myself going in there. In business, that's what we did. Okay. We went into a sector that people thought was not for Nigerians, nobody had done it, and all of that. And I went in there, pioneered it, broke it open, and today many Nigerians do the business that we were doing. Now, how would you react to the narrative that the ANI Association is an elitist group? I don't know. So, first and foremost, anything that has a few, num a number, few number of people in a large crowd would always be seen, seen as elitist, whether you like it or not. The entire number of ANI members is not up to 3,000 in the whole nation. So you have a small group of people who are in the civil service, who are in the military, who are in the uh, public sector, who are in politics, who are in, um, in business. 
And so people will naturally say that this is elitist. Mm. But no, what I would see is that some, somewhere, somehow, by configuration, mm -hmm. we have a group of people that have been called to serve this nation, and the best should be made of them. Mm -hmm. It's not about elitism. It's about, have you trained people who can now deliver mm -hmm. and bring Nigeria to a point where everyone is proud of? I, don't, I have no regrets about that. And I think we should use ANI and MNI members a lot more in Nigeria. It's okay. Who is your mentor and why? That's a wide question for me because mentors come in different segments depending on what you're doing and how uh, you want to do it. So I have religious mentors, business mentors, political mentors, spiritual mentors, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And so it's wide and it's different. Mm -hmm. Where I come from, I, uh, when it comes to the spiritual mentors, I would put Pastor Dibwe, who is my spiritual father, okay. as one. And he's a mentor that I hold on to. I've learned a lot from him in terms of humility and just the outlook of being able to think bigger, wider, mm -hmm greater than most others would think. Mm -hmm. And so you see what he has been able to do in that scale. And you know that this is somebody who thinks way, way, way ahead. I like legacy things. I like thinking far mm -hmm. ahead. And so from that perspective, mm -hmm. that is, is great. Um, when it comes to, hmm, which other one? When it comes to hmm, business, let me see. No, when it comes to politics, the one of the persons whose political activism has helped me grow over time has been what Nelson Mandela has been able to do. How do you stay focused on a long-term goal, mm. regardless of all the mm. distractions, Tractions. regardless of all the naysayers, mm. people who tell you it's impossible, it cannot be done, and all of that, but just keep your eyes focused mm. that this is where you're going, no matter how long it takes you will get there. That from Nelson Mandela for me, critical. So my political journey is based on, I know where we're going mm -hmm. and how long it's going to take there mm -hmm. can be 20 years, it may be longer, but what we want to change cannot be done overnight. And so it requires resilience, tenacity, it requires just a deep belief mm -hmm. in what is right. And regardless of what happens today, just stay on it. So those are the kind of mentors that I have. People who, anybody who can think long term through the challenges that mm -hmm. you have and break odds that nobody believes possible. Those are the kind of people that I like to follow. Thank you so much for being our guest. We know you have a busy schedule, but you still found time to talk with us. We really appreciate it. God bless. Well, that's it from here. The program continues. Thank you for staying. Despite all challenges, Nigeria has made significant strides in reforming its tax system. Nigeria has engaged in collaboration with international organizations and donor agencies to enhance its tax system. Support from organizations such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund have provided technical assistance and capacity building in tax administration. Efforts to address these bottlenecks and improve the administration of taxation continues to be a priority for the government. That's it on the program. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Tune in next time for another interesting episode. I am Chana Ejoga. Bye for now.